Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome to my Tuesday morning coffee show to help you with your career. Careers in coffee, love this time of week. The only other time that rivals today is Thursdays. So this is what we call it. This is like every Tuesday morning at 6.30 a.m. Central in the U.S. where I am, I release a video for you. This is like the after show. So what was going through my my noggin when I was giving you those pieces or piece of advice or that lesson. And Kara is t telling me it's all good, so we're good. Get in the chat, tell me who you are, tell me where you're from, tell me what you need. Today's a special one, I got some, some, some good messages for you. I'm gonna take a lot of your questions. I got some other stuff I wanna do, some announcements I wanna make. Get settled in, say hi, and yes, it is my birthday. So, feeling good, 53 years young, and I just love life. I just, I don't know why people worry about getting older. I, you know, I like clipping off the years and just enjoying myself. So, I'm feeling good. Great to have you. Hope you got your coffee or my European friends, your martinis or my Australian friends. You're probably taking your melatonin or something to go to bed. All right, so... Anna Goldman, first online, great to see you. Adam Stark, great to have you. You know, all my European friends, they always seem to get in early. So, uh, but I do, I, do want to, um, I do want to talk a minute about the video that came out this morning. And it was a, a little clip from a, a previous show that we did. And uh, it was about, really, I think it, it's about, you know, perspective and how much we lose sight of ourselves and 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 you know for some reason we think the tough times that we're going through are going to last forever we tend to miss all those breakthrough moments that seem to have ripples that go on forever we we all with every breath we take with everything that we do even when we're by ourselves we're we're making an impact there are lasting effects that go on in this world forever and ever and I don't want to make it sound dramatic, but I think it's important because I think we lose sight of how important what we do is, for whom we do it, and that everything that we do uh, for 99.9% .9 of us has a great and positive impact that lasts a long time. And that, that was really what the, you know, what, the, what the video was about. I want you all to think about the things that you've done, for those of you that are starting your careers, the choices that you've made, the people you've interacted with, the people you've met, those that have been in your careers for a while, all of the things that you've done day in and day out, what has transpired as a result of what you've done? It matters. And if you take, if you take a minute and slow down and think about it, I think you will be really surprised at what those ripples look like and what the echoes of your your shouts really look like. So I I encourage you to do that and I know that it's gotten uh, you know I got a kind of a little little kind of a little package here for you today. It's not very long, but I I think I want to touch on some things about you and some things about me. If you think about this thing we're talking through, I'm not talking about my webcam, but the but the internet. This is as far as I'm concerned, the greatest invention of all time. It has allowed us to do things like this that I would never have been able to do just a short few years ago. And But what it's also done, and this is also what I think helps us lose perspective and lose sight, is this thing, the internet, has made this entire world, it, it's, it's done about, it's done two things, it's done a lot of things, but it's done two things for a lot of people. And number one for everybody, it's made everything that we do a lot faster. I could find the answer faster when I need to get you know, new directions to or directions to a new place that I'm going. I just hit a button and up pops the route, right? It, my ability to deliver something to you, I can do it within seconds now. Um, but what that also has caused is a very, uh, uh, it, it, it's made a lot of us get very impatient. We want it fast. We want to grow fast. We want to sell it faster. We want to service it faster. We want to make more money faster. Everything is about speed. And I think that that's just, it's an unrealistic thing. And, and, and it also has allowed a lot of us to shine the light on me, 
on me, on me. And I think it's done those two things. It's done it for businesses. It's done it for individuals. And I think it's really caused us to lose to lose sight. But the one thing, when we talk about perspective and the, the impacts that you're going to make, wherever you are in your, in your life, time is the greatest separator of good and, and great, of, of things that are decent and things that are great. Time will always win out. And I think that there's, there's two things that if you, can, if you can have them within you, regardless of how old you are, ambition and patience, if those reside in the same body, it, it, will be, it will be epic. What you will deliver will be amazing. But if you only have one of those, which is what a lot of people have right now, ambition without that patience and willing to work hard and work it through and set up their businesses the right way or set up their companies or their teams or whatever it is, the relationships, it's not going to work. It's going to be, it's going to be catastrophic. And I think the, oh, I hear my door opening. And I, I think the other thing is that, that that time that a lot of us, the eras that we've lived through, uh, we've been able to build build foundations where we recognize that ambition and impatience are important just because of the way things moved. But I think we've lost perspective. We lost a lot of sight of that right now. And I think that when you think about uh, doing well and doing well over your lifetime, if you can, you know, people with ambition and patience, they also think differently. They don't think speed and me. They think slower and solid, serving, and they think about you. They think about them. Think about your teammates. Think about your community. Think about your customers. If your focus is on them and you think long term, that's a recipe for being epic too. I mean, you will never. Time will never beat you if, if you think those two things. And I think it's hard. I think we lose, I think, I think we, we really lose our perspective. And, and one of the other things that I wanted to share with you about, about today was I thought about uh, just about three years ago, I, I turned the camera on for what was really the first time. And I decided that, you know, I wanted to be a coach in this format and that I was going to have to use video to, to do that. I didn't really know what I was doing. And at that moment, I think I was thinking yesterday, I was thinking back about that moment and how god awful that video was. And what was going through my head at that time was, well, the first thing I was going through it was hurry up and go and suck so that you could start to get better because your first video is not going to be very good. But what really was going through my head after I got over that was don't worry, you got a good message, they need to hear it. Whoever it is, somebody will, will hear it and they will need the help. They'll find you when they, when they need you. And don't worry about how you look. It's not about me. It's not about your ego. It's about them. And it's even funny because some of you even comment about some of my earlier videos well, sure. I had a million things going through my head. I, you know, the, the delivery isn't as fluent. I had the script. I needed, you know, notes and all that good stuff. But at that time, I was thinking long term. And and if you need a laugh, go 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 watch my earliest of videos. But the reason that I want to mention that is, I also um, I got a little thing from YouTube on Friday. It's this, uh, this, this, this black box. I don't know if you know what's in it. I have not opened it. So I actually, whoop, and I wanted to share this with you. I got it on Friday, and so you, you, you knew that I wasn't fibbing. I actually took a picture and posted it on my YouTube community tab and a few other places. Some of you might have seen it this morning in my email. It's literally been sitting on that table, my work table, since Friday. I haven't opened it yet. And, um, and, 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 and. You know, it's a little, I haven't really thought about it, but it's a little sign of that first time. I didn't really think about what this was going to become, but you all came, you all stayed, you helped me grow my channel. All that means to me is it's not about the followers, it's not about the subscribers. You're all human beings with ambitions and, and problems that you need help with. And it's, it's, it's my privilege to help you and do these things with you. And so, what, you know, when you reach a certain threshold, YouTube uh, taps you on the shoulder and they say, hey, you're legit. We want to send you a little award. That's what's in there. And I haven't opened it. So apparently <laughs> my thing, my name is engraved, but I've got my little slicer here 
to uh, to open to open this thing, and I want to see what it looks like, and I want to see what it looks like with with you. And so let's let's take a a quick peek at this thing. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Oh wait, there's a whole there's a whole packaging thing here. Oh wait, look, my wife is here. Wait, there's even a letter. There's even a look. Wait, so I don't know if you can see this. I don't know what this thing says, but I'll read it later. But um, but this is YouTube's. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It's it's YouTube's button. I don't know. You probably seen this hanging on people's walls. It's gonna go in a corner somewhere in my office because it's not about the number of subscribers. To me, it is about you, your ambitions, your problems that you need help with. And, and sometimes it's it's the camaraderie, right? It's the community and all those other things. So I just, I wanna say thank you. It is my privilege beyond anything you can ever imagine to help you. And I, I will show up week in and week out. So thanks. <laughs> Happy birthday, honey. Oh, yes. I'm so say proud hi. of you. Thank you. Say hi to them. Hi guys, everybody. Best of luck with your job search and um, you're in good hands with my thank love. You. All right, have a great day. You too, bye. So thank you again for this. It means the world to me. All right, what else? Just wanted to let you know, you never, oh, we got all kinds of things falling out here. Think long-term. Think long-term, focus on today. And there's, there's one other thing I wanna wrap up with that's a little trick for you guys before we get into the Q&A. I wake up every day, I think about two things. What's your next problem going to be and what's my next problem going to be? That is what's gonna give you staying power. That's, gonna, that's what's gonna make the ripples last so long. So what do I mean by that? So when I shot my first video, I was thinking about your issues. They were related to job searching. But now I have a lot of job searching related stuff. That's how a lot of you found me. What's your next problem gonna be? Your next problem's gonna be developing in your career, building your leadership skills, building your high performance skills, and so on. Then you're gonna have more problems, and so on, and so forth. So every day, not only do I focus on building your great stuff and, and serving it, but I also think about, I have to be out in front of you so that I can help you develop whatever it is you're gonna need next. Now, when I look internally, I have to make sure I have my eye on the ball today, but I also have to make sure that I'm able to support you, and so I'm always looking for my next problem. So my first problem was I need a community. I need people to find me and trust me. The next thing, my problem was I need to be able to, if I want the privilege to coach them at the deepest level, I need a product that they can enroll in or buy or however you want to call it, the coaching services, the training services. Once you enroll in that, what's my next problem? There's going to be so many of you that it's going to be difficult for me to service it and answer all your questions. So I plan for all of that. That's what gives you the staying power. That's what, that's what helps you grow. When you think about your jobs right now, think about what, does my, what is my customer going to need next? What would be the next evolution for my team? What would be the next evolution for me? And all of that good stuff. And, and, and one eye on the detail, one eye on the future, it works. Those people, you know, what comes very quickly we, about the speed of the internet, what comes very quickly usually goes away very quickly or crashes very quickly. Somebody who, I, I saw this through one of my YouTube communities and some woman who lives out of a camper or something put one video out on YouTube, had a million plus followers after, after one video, but she can't possibly support them. She can't possibly engage them all. She can't possibly respond to them probably doesn't have a business model behind it. Those kinds of things. Just an example from my world, but think about it for your world. You salespeople, you marketers, it doesn't make any difference. You developers, you technologists, what's the next issue gonna be for your customer, for your team? You think about that, you will always be moving in the right direction. All right, enough about that. Let's get to your questions. Thanks for indulging me, thank you. For all the support, you believe me, it means uh, it means the world to me. It really does. All right, Anna, I don't know if there's a question. Let's get on with, with on with that stuff. Happy birthday, Annie. Thank you, my dear. Hi, everyone. Just arrived for my second interview, and all the building has been evacuated due to a fire alarm. Good entrance made or a strong sign to run away. <laughs> uh, you know. 
I, I would, I would make sure to evacuate so that you live another day. Um, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm guessing you're just joking there. All right, Adam Stark. Thanks for the birthday wishes. When researching companies for my target list. When on their site, LinkedIn, et cetera, what things should I look for? I just answered this one last week for you. Uh, any advice on finding good or bad? Adam, go back to last week. It, wherever it was that I answered your question, I answered that exact same question. All right, Nick, thanks for the birthday wishes. Diana, happy bir- Thank you for the birthday wishes. Bobby Kasky, thank you. And yes, wait, do you guys know that I sell? Ce- I mean, I celebrate. You know, all is great because it's Virgo land now. All is right with the world for the last three days. Um, oh, flower cup this morning. This is what my wife handed me this morning. Mm. And Gary, I don't know if you're here with me today. Uh, I would have used your mug today, the one you sent me with the picture of me and the Mile Walk Academy on it, but my wife was drinking out of it because she wanted that one. Hey, Kara. And T, happy birthday. Finished a bad video inter- interview today, so feeling a little down because I couldn't establish rapport. Finished a bad interview today, feeling a little down. I couldn't establish one. How can we interrupt conversation and try establishing connections in those cases? And it's difficult to say how to interject because I don't know what the exchange was like. This 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 video interview, uh, for sure, it was a two-way, obviously, if you needed to interrupt the conversation. But what I would say is... And I don't know if you've seen it, but I have a, a video interview tips for job seekers. Uh, I would I would actually check that video out. Uh, that's the one that I developed about a year ago. It was uh, last August, and it's got 20 tips in it. Uh, it's it's really really good, and I would I would focus on that. The other thing is when you talk about the exchange as the dialogue, so the video interview will help you with the whole setup structure and how to be comfortable with the camera and all that good stuff. When you talk about the dialogue going back and forth, that's going to have more to do with the ebb and the flow of the conversation. And I, without knowing how, and, and observing, it's very difficult to say how to appropriately interject without interrupting. Uh, one thing I will leave you with on a high note, usually, statistically, whoever talked more thought the interview went better. That's usually how it goes. All right, Evelyn O, hey to you. Varun, hey to you. All right. Yes, Evelyn is a boot camp. Yeah, all my all my boot campers, put your medallion hashtags up there. All my leaders, put yours up. All my I-teamers, put yours up. If you are in the Mile Walk Academy, let me know. I always love to give you a shout out. Varun, this is a this is a darn good question. I love this one. How long should I wait before I ask a LinkedIn connection for a job request? Mm. Varun. I would I would say it depends on the strength of the relationship. If it's somebody you know really well, you can ask them right away. If it's somebody that's lukewarm, you can compress the time. But let's just say it's somebody cold. What I like to do is I like to reach out to uh, you know develop relationships with people. I want to send them an in-mail or an email and get permission to connect. It's a much more solid uh, connection request if you've exchanged some dialogue and you've asked for permission. Uh, we we in the biz call that permission based marketing. Okay, so so uh, you know we you're you're asking for the opportunity to have the connection or make the call or have the dialogue or the email exchange or whatever it is. I would then paint the picture of why you chose them in in the initial message. Then what I would do is I would connect and then I would probably see how their response was. Is their response warm? Is it it interactive? The more engaged they are with you in the exchange going back and forth, the quicker I would go for the ask. If they are not as engaged, like, hey, sure, I'm happy to... Um, you know, connect with you. It would be nice to talk some time, or it would be nice to exchange some time, or whatever. I'd probably wait a week. Uh, it's just, it's just my style. I think that 
you know, it's kind of like me with you. I allow you to, I try to expose you to what I have to offer you, but I don't ask you for a sale of or an engagement of my programs or I don't even ask you to trust me on the first date, so to speak. And it's kind of like that with you. You know, I would try to I would try to see if there was something that I could do to offer up some value and let it simmer a little bit. Every situation is going to be different. It's really, you know, if somebody introduced me, you know, if somebody made a connection between me and somebody else and I didn't know that person, I would immediately try to see how I can help them. That's just me being proactive and and also assuming that there was a reason that they were connecting that person with me if they needed something. And I trust my relationships who make those connections and I'm happy to help. So it, it just, it, I guess it, it depends. You gotta, you gotta read the, you gotta read the situation. So I hope that helps. Uh, knees, I don't even know how to say that, but thank you for the birthday wishes. Joe Winter from Louisville, always great to see you. Warren Coyle, how you doing? And Mama Coyle back in New York. From all of us to all of you, including my, that's awesome. Mom, tell Mama Coyle she's got to come to Bub City with us. I got some announcements to make. One of them is the Chicago meet and greet that we're going to be having on September 13th. Vanessa, great to see you. Uh, raining in Toronto. Sorry to hear it poured here yesterday. I had to run last night in the rain. Oi. All right. Okay. Uh, Nizivik. SA. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to give me a handle I can pronounce, my friend. All right, I'm starting to write down how I want to approach, what I want to say in an interview, what format should I follow? Should I answer questions in the past? How would I do it in the future? Okay. So uh, here's what I would suggest. This book is free. Here's one announcement. This book is free if you do not have it. If you pay my picking, packing, and materials fees, which are seven bucks, that's what I charge you. I'll ship it to you anywhere in the world. You get the ebook and the audiobook and some other goodies right away. This book will tell you exactly how to approach questions. It depends what question you get asked that'll determine the way in which you need to answer it. So if it is a question about your past and how you did something, you need to talk in the past tense. But then my tip is always finish out your story and then try to shift the, the programming to the future by asking them if they have a situation in their environment that is similar and to see if they want to know how you would handle it in their environment using their variables and their components and their customer types and their products or whatever. So they're going to cue you as to how to answer it, whether it's in the past or the future. And one other video that I would highly check out if which is two things, One in, in addition to the book. One, one other thing for all of you is I've got a video out there called This One Job Interview Tip is Guaranteed to Get You Hired. It talks about how to shift the discussion from the past into the future at various stages in the interview process. So it's not just, hey, what I just said, hey, if they give you an a question about your past, move it to the future. There are ways to do that through the tell me about yourself phase of the interviewing questions, any specific questions, and when you get to ask your questions, I take you through all of that. So I would check that out. And then the other thing that you probably want to watch is my free recorded webinar, Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview. When I mention uh, my webinars, uh, when I use the term webinar, it's going to be recorded. It's, it's, it's about an hour. You can watch it on demand, meaning you don't have to sign up. You just register, and then what will happen is we give you an email, and then you could watch it at your leisure. Okay, so I have three, video, uh, I have three webinars like that. Uh, I have three uh, secrets to get your resume noticed. I have the uh, three keys to ace any job interview, and really the one that everybody should watch is how to find a job you love. And, and, and that's, that covers kind of the whole, the whole thing soup to nuts. Those are all recorded. They're all free. Uh, and you can watch them all at your leisure. So check those out. Thanks for the birthday wishes, Joe. Ryan Dunson, hey, thanks for the wish. Lorena, happy birthday, Andy, and congratulations on my 100. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to look at that thing later. Um, you know, for me, it, it isn't, uh, I'm not, 
you know, I'm, I am, uh, and I, I mean this, I am not about awards. I am about what does the award mean? And that is not about me. That The thing that I know is that I've helped a lot of people. And I, I when I look at the silver little button thing, that's what I'm going to remember is, is you're helping, a, you're helping a lot of people. And so thank you. Thank you for that. I, I do appreciate that. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day and an amazing year. Thank you for all your support and giving us the best advice. You, you are, you are welcome. I just, it is, you just can't even imagine how much it's my privilege. Alina, Alina, thanks for getting up early, my boot camper. Hey, Alina, I got, actually, after we hang up, I got to call my Ironman coach. <laughs> actually, to, to set up a swim with, oh, yeah, yeah, with him. But, yep, we are, uh, you are a great boot camper. You are just a great human being all the way around. All right. All right, this Niz, Nizovic. Uh, yeah, you gonna have, you got you to gotta change your handle or tell me your name. So at least that way I know and I can call you by your name. Uh, is there a way to find out who the hiring manager is? Some career coaches are offering that info as a service. So let's take this backwards. Uh, it is not a service that any career coach should be offering you because that is absolutely ridiculous. Um, the, the company you're interviewing with in 98% of the cases will give you the names of the interview interviewers. And, all, and, and if they don't, all you need to do is ask. But most of the time, they will say, you're meeting with Jane Doe, John Smith, he's the VP of this, she's the VP of that, you're gonna meet with some team members, here's their names, and so on. That's, that's free, that's free advice. Don't, um, don't pay for that, ever. There, you know, the, the, you, you can get that. So just, all you need to do is ask. All right, Vanessa, does your leadership program tackle confidence? My sense is yes, I want and need to develop this. So I'm gonna, let me make a, a quick little announcement. I have a leadership monthly live. It's a mentoring program. I go live every month. It's literally like every four weeks. If you don't, it can't make the time. I vary the times. They're usually on Wednesdays. Sometimes they're midday. Sometimes they're at the end of the day. Everything's recorded for you. Uh, we have six already recorded six lessons already exist the number one lesson the first lesson is on building confidence and it's on building confidence when you need to learn a new skill when you need to do a new project when you need to change a habit whatever it is i teach you the process whether it's a rep repetitious situation or whether it's a tackling where you have a lot of problems to get to the end goal situation I, we, we covered confidence, we covered focus, we covered decision making, how to make great long-term decisions. I covered building trust. I covered um, how, to, how to give a, uh, a persuasive argument, so a presentation, what are the key pieces that are included, and, uh, and, and a, let's, I'm, I'm missing one, but there were, there were six of them. Maybe Kara can, can kick in what that last one was we, done, we did. And then, and then this one come. Oh, listening. And then the last, the next one is actually on habit building. So the one coming up on September 11th. So if you join, not only do you get those archives, you get to come then each month. Uh, it, there's an, I have an annual package and I have a month to month package. The month to month package is forty nine dollars. The annual package is half of that per month, meaning it's two two ninety seven for the year. So it's twenty four fifty a month. And if you get in on the annual package. You get my goal setting masterclass, which is coming up next week. I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. And you also get my career accelerator program, which Vanessa, you already have because you're a boot camper, but it's a pretty sweet deal. So yes, but just to give everybody else a little color, it's an it's a awesome program. It is it is about it is for leaders and it is about building leaders. So it's for both. It's for senior people who want to focus on those skills and building high performance skills. And it could be about you know, the recent college graduate who wants to learn the, all those foundational skills that transcend any career that you are in. And a lot of these are life related. Cool. Znat, thank you. Evelyn O, thank you. Luke, everything, thank you for that. Warren, what do we got? Informational interview today with a dream brand. Awesome. Very excited. Good luck. Good luck. 
Peter Torres, good luck on that phone interview. Thanks for the wishes. Dania, Dania, thank you. Good morning from New York. J-R-E-E-D-M. Hope you're having a I am. Still in the hunt. Nine months. It's been hard. Had a lot of interviews, but no luck. Do not give up. Do not give up. Please don't give up. You know, the, 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 the one thing that I talked about earlier about perspective, our inability to have that perspective and be able to think long term and all that other good stuff, it's the same handicap that we seem to have, that mental uh, inability to, uh, to project like that is also the same one that keeps us imprisoned when we're going through a rough patch that makes us feel like it's going to go on forever. It won't. I promise you it won't. Everything ends. All good stuff ends. All bad stuff ends. It's about, you know, and it's not the weight of the load. It's the way you carry it. So uh, I'm, I'm sending you good vibes, my friend, and, and ha- hang in there. Please do. It, it, you know, something will click for you. All right, Warren, what do we got? If the interviewer is also new to the company two months, should I congratulate her on joining the company? I figure it shows I did my homework without being too in your face. Absolutely. Great question. Not only. So let's take both both sides of the spectrum. For all of you who have a new interviewer to the company, these are the questions you got to ask. Congratulations. I saw you recently joined the company. Awesome. What drew you to the company? What drew you to the company? Why did you come here? What have you discovered since you've been here that was a surprise to you? Eight weeks. What did you surprise? Don't say good or bad. Just say surprise. See what she says or he says. And then they're going to give you a good one or a bad one. And then you ask for an alternate. So what surprised you? Were there any good surprises? Were there any bad surprises? That kind of, okay, so that's another question. You got to make sure. And then on from there, depending on how it flows. If somebody's been there a long time, I see you've been here a long time. What's kept you here? What do you love about this place? Anything you would improve? You have such great intimate working knowledge. Like you got to think about what's appropriate for that person. So, So go get them. Go get them. All right, Charlene Crocker, great to get connected with you on LinkedIn. By the way, I always forget to say this one. If you and I are not connected on LinkedIn, why not? Send me an invitation, please, and just say, hey, Andy, I'm in your community. would love to connect. That's all I need to know. I love your YouTube videos. Hey, I was at Careers and Coffee this morning. Hey, I saw you at Live Office Hours Thursday. Whatever, just send it to me. You're welcome to leverage my network. You don't have to just follow me. Just, just connect with me. Uh, great traction over the last few days through networking and your tips. Thank you. You hoping to have more concrete appointments. Love to hear it. And great to have you in the resume program too. Spring, hey. Natalie Taylor, hey. Thank you for that. Joe Winter, one of two. Recruiter contacted me yesterday for a role that would require Relo. However, company does not offer Relo assistance or even travel assistance for on-site interview. Should I proceed even though I would have to Relo Wait, even though I would have to reload this. So, and let me make sure I got this right. Company contacts you and they are not going to pay you to come to their site for an interview. Huge, as in huge, red flag. If the company is not even willing to get you to the spot to interview, I would look elsewhere. That's my preference that's just me because that is a sign of what it will be like to work there if you said however that they cannot afford a relocation stipend or assistance for me to move there that might be a little different because you can negotiate that in the form of a sign-on bonus a higher salary a bigger back-end bonus or whatever but somebody who's not going to pay for you to interview and get you there to interview, I would be really careful. And, you know, I would not spend my money at all to go and and get on a plane or drive several hours or whatever it's going to be. That's me. I think that's a sign of of what the company would be like to work with. Just experience talking. Okay, hope that helps. Brian, hey. 
Not sure if companies are flagging my boss hunter's email as a phishing attempt, mail open, but not the resume. No, Brian, it, that is not um, that is not in any way, shape, or form an issue. Uh, it I don't know if you're sending it as a Word doc or a PDF. Uh, everything that you do is is in this form of, for you job searchers is marketing. So. If you're watching, you know they're opening the email, that's awesome, send a PDF. If they're not opening the PDF, I just don't think that they're, that they're just, they're probably not interested or, or they're, you know, I open a lot of emails. And I, so just like to give you guys an idea and any of you that put read notifies on emails to me, I, my cursor will slide down my inbox and it looks like I'm opening stuff and I'm not even reading it. I'm, I'm like, I'm going down and 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 I slide down and the cursor, well, I'll just tap and, and, and it flashes a preview or whatever, but I'm not even reading them. And I'm going down and looking for stuff that I want. And then it might look like I read it when I actually didn't read it and I haven't deleted it because I need to go back and read it when I have time. And, and I have lots of filtering rules. So... Um, like for example, when a, a, all the boot campers get an email from me that says, please share your story with me. When they respond to that email, it doesn't go in my inbox. It goes into a different spot because that's programmed to do that. Uh, when you send a support email, it goes into a different spot because it's programmed to do that because I need to see if somebody needs something. So anyway, I don't, I would not, I wouldn't, I would, you know, and then the other thing is why not go into LinkedIn? Why not send an in-mail and see if that, you know, if that gets a response? Try different things there, for sure. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to give you a nickname. We're going to call you Nee. Uh, nee, how do, how, do, how do you find and connect with a recruiter? I do not necessarily recommend that you find and connect with third-party recruiters. If you want to find uh, corporate recruiters, that might be a little bit more effective. What I would say is I would highly recommend you watch my video on working with corporate recruiters, and there's one with working with executive recruiters, and it will it will teach you all of that stuff. Those are good for you to, to check out. Akshay, happy birthday. Have a great one. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Natalie Taylor on the Good Wishes. Jenny Hinkle, hey, thanks for that. Manisha, dear Manisha, my boot camper and leader and all around awesome person. My very dear awesome coach, Andy. <laughs> on your happy birthday, wishing you an awesomely blessed day that goes entirely your way spent in the company of your chosen loved ones. I will. Thank you for that. All right. I just, you guys are just awesome. Following your dreams and inspiring your followers. I sure am. Who's Brito? Thank you. Andy and wife. Yes, my wife is Linda. Hey, all right, 38 minutes in. I got plenty of time for you guys. I want to run through some announcements. All right. If you don't know, I got this goal setting masterclass. Uh, can you see that? Goal setting masterclass. You can actually get this live agenda that I I slave over these things, but I I wrote this for you. Uh, it's next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's nine hours of live training, and it's gonna be awesome. It's free. You got to register, so you got to enter your name and register, and then you've got to RSVP for the session. So when you go to the site, maybe Kara, can you can you pop the, the, the link in there? You go to the page that gives you a little insight on the program. You can download the agenda from there as well, that thing I just held up. You get an email, and then you need to RSVP so you can get your link to our private place where we're going to be holding it so you can engage with me. The goal setting masterclass is based on this book. This book is uh, out of reach but insight. I'm giving this away for free right now. If you chip in the seven bucks for the packing materials and the and the envelope and the handling and all that stuff, um, this book is broken into five sections. It's a fast read. It's like it's an inspirational book. It it looks like that. You can read this thing quickly. It's a speech I gave. The speech was about 50 minutes, 48 minutes, something like that. And the goal setting masterclass is the, it's awesome. It's the detail breakdown. So think like an hour per module 
to go through and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about setting goals. I am gonna teach you where they come from, how to look at them, how to process them, why you're gonna fail them, how not to fail them, how to build systems to achieve them. I'm gonna go through every day. I will give you a goal setting sheet that I guarantee you've never seen before, ever. I've looked, I think there's nothing but short-sighted stuff out there that's not gonna help you do it. This thing's gonna be complete. So grab the book and then come to the class. And then the other thing I wanna mention is uh, I did mention the Leadership Monthly Live program in the continuation of goal achievement on Wednesday, September 11th, my Leadership Monthly Live program is going to be on habit building. So I'm taking one of the most instrumental components of achieving goals, the systems that you build, and I'm gonna break it down further for my leaders. Now, if you are in the Leadership monthly program on the annual package. So you could pay month to month, you could pay annually. You are gonna get the goal setting master class recordings and the whole course as a bonus in your in your in your training system. If you're already in my annual package, don't worry, it'll be there. If you want to join and get the annual package, you will get it as soon as it's done recorded next week or whatever it could be like toward the end of the week. I'll build it all in advance. All right, on, and this is an order of date. On September 13th, Friday at 2 p.m. at Bub City in Rosemont is my Mile Walk Academy meet and greet. So you the, the email this morning that went out to you guys that opened it has a lot of this info in there, but the, some of the details are in there. You'll be getting a follow-up. Uh, if you follow me on the social sites, you've probably seen an alert. On September 18th, I have a live job search boot camp program. It's live. It's a special for the boot campers. We are going to beat the hell out of the ATS. And we're going to give you best practices and how to... It's 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 about the ATS. It's about submission stuff. And then there's a huge Q&A. And then we've got more sessions. we got like eight more sessions in October and November. So it's a great time to get in the boot camp. And if you miss the resume writing special that I had for 49 bucks. You can still grab that. If you're on my email list, you got that in the in the digest today. If you're not, maybe Kara will be nice and can put the private link in in the in the chat here so you can grab it. So those are those are my big those are my big announcements. Um, so I hope you can can join me on some of that stuff. All right. Jerry, you are welcome. Warren Coyle Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. Thank you. As a matter of fact, can I say something about that? And I know what you mean, but let me offer up, let me offer up a something for, for Warren, for everybody. We'd lo- I'd love to think that. I wish I could just build it and they will come. But you know what? You've got to help them find you. And uh and and that's just remember that. It doesn't uh, for any of you that are building a, a product or a service, nothing sells itself, not even if it's free. Literally, my best stuff, people don't even take. Um, my 10 by 10 booklet is the is one of the best damn giveaways ever, and it is the least downloaded of all the stuff. So I, I mention that because I want you to take the 10 by 10. Kara, can we throw the 10 by 10 up there so they have it? Tony, how are you, my boot camper? We are the same age. I love it, Tony. We're 106. Mm. RT, how you doing, buddy? April J, thank you. You are a blessing to this world. I hope my mother is here to read that. She is like the real blessing, and then I'm just li- like a mini blessing. All right. Vanessa, th- thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks, Alina. And T, frustrated about the job search, a friend offered me to collaborate with his startup for zero pay. It's great, but won't help me pay the bills. Savings go down. For how long could I stay with the friend? So Anne and everybody else who has this particular situation. My take on the volunteering stuff, it is good. You are the only one that can determine how long you can do that. Right, the more money you got, and the more comfortable you are with using some of your savings while you do that, the longer you can go. But what I what I would try to do 
is I would try to go halftime uh, and search halftime because then at least you've got something on your resume. Hey, I'm currently doing this. You, you do not need to say it's on a volunteer basis. Whether you get paid or not for the job that you are doing is your business. So, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm working uh, as, a, as a contractor, right? Just you're free. So what? Uh, with this startup, I'm also looking for a more full-time position. That's how I would package that. Myron Grimes, my good friend, how are you? How is the new job? Let me know about that. Put that in the chat. And just so you guys know, I don't, like, we might not be, we might not go through every, like, I go in order. We might not always get through everybody, which is usually the case. But Kara and I, we review the chat after. So it's always nice to see your thoughts, your comments. We look at the questions you ask us. Sometimes when I don't get to them, we think, dang, that was a good one bummer and then we make it a topic that we talk about either at the next live show or live office hours or whatever so don't no matter when you join this even if you think oh man he's never going to get to that i'm i'm too late you do a couple things put it in the chat and then also when we're done and this thing's recorded go into the comments because i leave these up on youtube go into the comments and then 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 put it in there and then i i try to answer those so i spend I spent time, Here, here's another thing, little black box thing. I remember when I had about 10,000 followers uh, or subscribers on the YouTube channel and I would go and I would answer all my comments. And somebody said, well, you're never going to be able to do that when you hit 100,000. I spend time every day in those comments and I do my dang best to try to answer as many almost everyone that I possibly can. Sometimes it's hard to answer some of them that are so open-ended that I wouldn't even know where to begin. Um, and sometimes I leave you know, the rude comments alone, And but I'm in there and I do my best to try to see them all. I don't always see them all. I have alerts set so that YouTube can feed me the stuff so that it can go into a queue. That's how I do that. Um, I, I don't sit on my YouTube channel and look for the alerts. I have them fed to me, and then I know that they're there, and then I do my best to go. Now, I have to support the Mile Walk Academy paying members first, but I spend time every day in YouTube going through those comments. It is insulting to, to totally ghost people uh, who are engaging in your stuff on social media and you're not responding. I think that's just crap. So I'm there. So get in there and get the comments in, and I will do my best. Now, if you send me something this long, that's harder for me to read. It's hard for me to get through. So if, you, if you've got some, some pointed questions, ask them, and I'd rather go back and forth with you. Ask me a question, I'll answer. You ask, I'll answer. I'm like, I'd rather go that way than one big long thing that then I then have to move to the side uh, until I have a lot more time, which, which, is, which becomes difficult. I don't even know why I got on that, but just make sure you put your comments out there. All right. So, Anne, I hope that helped. Thanks for the birthday wishes, too, Myron. And thanks for the congrats. Anna Goldman, I smashed it. Second offer on its way. One month, two job offers for my company shortlists. Happy birthday, Annie. And thank you very much for changing my professional life completely. And I love, you know what? Uh, there ain't, there ain't. Oop, let me get that. There ain't a YouTube award or any award that matters more to me than that. I mean it. I mean it. That just, uh, I'm telling you people, man, they can send me all the gold and platinum things that they want. I, nothing matters more to me than that. Ever. Never will. I mean it. Samuel Brady, thank you. I hope so. All right, Racer X. Racer Rex. Speed racer here. All right. Asking for uh, asking for someone else. She has an interview this morning and was told job salary is firm. It never is firm. However, she has more experience and licensing requirement for the job. How should she go about it? So if I'm going into that, oh, negotiating to get close to what she's currently making. So if, okay, so I make, let's say I make 50 grand. I go in there, they say, it's a tight 45. That's it. That's, a, that's all we pay. I'd say fine. I'd go in and then I would negotiate at the end. I, 
nothing is firm. If you got the goods and you can make the case, companies will find the money. Everybody, remember this. Even if you are not negotiating for salary. Yesterday, I was on the phone with Verizon, who has been overbilling me for two years. They've been charging me taxes for my old city and my old county, and now my new city and my new county, and I discovered this on my bill yesterday. I'm on the phone with the rep. Now, this is a bunch of money because it's two years worth. She says, we'll give you a $10 credit. And I said, no, that's not good enough. That's all we can offer. Then it went up to 20. That's really it. I said, I want to speak to somebody who has the authority to go higher. Then she went and chased somebody who was go higher. Then she goes back. She says, well, that person's going to be a few minutes. Do you want to stay on hold? Now it's getting close to the point where it's costing me more money to stay on the phone with them. I, so which I said that to them. It's costing me more money to stay on the phone with you. you got to go higher. I've been a longtime customer. I never. Okay, this is her with the licensing requirements, and she's got the goods. I've been a longtime customer. I've never missed a bill, right? I, you know, I've been here, right? You, how do you, you got to be kidding me? You want to lose me? This and that. My wife too. We pay a bunch of money. Okay, then. It, okay, I'll double that. Now it's up to forty bucks, and now it's okay. Well, I thought there was a firm ten dollar limit. Everything in life is negotiable. Don't forget that. Everything, no matter what anybody tells you. So this rep who said she had a $10 limit, went to 20, then went to 40. I don't know what I could have squeezed out if the, if the other you know, person got on the phone, but the point is don't take no for an answer. Okay, that <laughs> could tell I was mad <laughs> yesterday. Vlad. Any advice on private equity sector job hunting? Want to get to portfolio management at director level? Networking is slow. Vlad, yes, it usually is with private equity people. Uh, you need somebody in there, in the good old boys club, forgive the expression, to get you connected. You're not going to walk in the door. Okay, so you're going to need you're going to need find you're going to need to find somebody who knows somebody, and 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 that's my advice. And uh, I would also, uh, here's my other piece of advice. I have dealt with private equity in a number of cases. I have been an angel investor in a company that had to deal with bringing forth uh, ownership equity of the company to private equity and uh, venture capitalist firms as well as other companies who were interested in buying the company that I was investing in. And you need to know the landscape and the behavior and the motivations of those organizations and the way that they treat their acquisitions, their investments, and their people. So while it may sound great and it might be perfect for you, just make sure that the culture of that environment, and I'm talking about private equity in general, is for you, is for you. So Vlad, uh, that's the buyer beware uh, little pitch. Who's Brito? Yes, boot campers. I, I'm not sure who you who you are. If you're one of my boot campers, um, or your boot camper wannabe, or you're just cheering us on, but I appreciate that. I I wish I knew your name. Ludmila, hi Andy, happy birthday. Thank you. A few weeks ago, I was interviewed for a job, but wasn't successful. I sent the HM a message uh, to get the job after being rejected. Awesome, and got a nice reply. I saw that her department is hiring again for a similar position. Can you advise on if I should message her again? And if so, what should the con what should be the content? Yes, you should, and yes, I can. So, if anybody does not know what Ludmila is referring to, I have a package out there on YouTube about how to get the job after being rejected. So, you go through this interview process, you get down to the end, and they don't select you for reasons that they selected someone else and everything was fine with you they just liked somebody better uh it was nothing like hey you'll never fit in here you're not a cultural fit you know you you threw up on somebody's shoes or whatever it was it was nothing like that it was a, a, a very positive breakup and they ended up giving the job to somebody else or even if they if they did what we call a balk, where they didn't hire anybody and they decided to put the position on hold. I have a letter 
uh, that I recommend that you send them that's a combination thank you slash cover letter because that's the kind of content that's in there that basically lets you go out with some class and puts a very, very positive note on, on basically the temporary breakup. What that does is it tees you up for an opportunity to possibly work there at a different capacity or I get emails on a weekly basis from people who use that where they ended up calling them back to actually get the job they interviewed for. Some of them they call back where they get a job that they did not interview for, but it was a different job, same company. It's a way to continue the relationship. It also plants the seed that you will follow up with them 30 days later. You don't say that, but you do that 30 days later. Now, you want to monitor them. You want to be following them on LinkedIn. You want to be following the company for alerts. You want to be following the people you interview with. Okay, so you want to make sure that if you, at a minimum, if you don't connect with them, that you're following them to see what their updates are. Because, um, Kara, can you make a note? I wanna, I wanna make a, I wanna make a, a video on that one. I wanna make a video on uh, following people on LinkedIn. Why we need to do that? Okay, so hopefully you are, are with me here at seven fifty six. Um, but you should be, you should be following because there's still possibilities that that person says, oh, we're hiring again. Oh, my company's hiring again. Oh, whatever. You know, like, people do that, all right? So, so in your case, I would, there's no need to wait. You saw something, you want to reiterate what you put in the rejection email. So, I still would love to work for this organization. I still think this is a great fit because, and I really would be interested in speaking with you about this position. You know what I mean? Just like get that in there. Don't wait. Email direct. No LinkedIn in mails. Okay, put it in a, in the through the corporate email system, and that's what I would do there. And good luck with that, because that's that's good stuff. And RT is my boot camper. You gotta get your leader tag back, back man. Uh, all right, wait. Adam Stark got something in. Hey, no need to forgive you, buddy. I, I just thought it was the same question. <laughs> I did get your answer from last week. I was talking more in depth. Can you message people working there? I'm not too good at seeing the signs on corporate sites. I would, uh, without question, if I did not have an interview yet, I would be contacting people and saying, hey, I love your background. I noticed you're working at... It's, I'm in the middle of my job search and it's one of the organizations I'm highly interested in. I'm wondering if you'd be open to sharing how you enjoy working there. Ask. Just, I need your help. I want this information. Don't say I'm wondering if you can put me in touch and blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm just doing some investigation. Then what you hope is they look at your background and they say, hey, that Adam Stark guy, that guy looks pretty good. We should, we should try to get him in here. Would you be interested in, so you, you, did, you sent me that email and I worked there and I liked your background. I'd say, would you be interested in me making an introduction? That's me, but that's what you're hoping for, right? And you're never gonna know if you're hitting a, a person who has my outlook on life unless you send that. And I, you could send it via email or you can send it via uh, in mail. But I, I like the email because I think that, um, you know, I like the tracking. So give that a try. Yes, 100%. Znap. Hi, Andy. Question. How do you explain during the interview that you had resigned from the previous job because you're micromanager and the low growth potential within the company and not sound negative? Znap. Take this book. Get the ebook. I answer it. Number two question. Right, or actually, actually, really, number one question: Why are you leaving your current company? Actually, it's the number one question. Everything needs to be positive, right? There are ambitions that I have. Uh, I've tried to pursue them here, so on and so forth. Frame it. I literally, I packaged inside the book, inside the inside the interview book. There's a chapter there. That's called the silver bullet interview chapter. My silver bullet interview chapter. It's got the 14 most effective job interview questions a company can ask you to find out about 80 to 85 percent of what they need to know about you. The other remaining 15 to 20 percent is your domain expertise, your particular 
functioning, okay? Your, par your particular function. In the breakdown of the 14 questions, I tell you why the question is asked. I also give you variations of that question that are disguises for the same exact question. I give you the rationale, what they're looking for, and how to answer them. It, it's a steal. Grab it. It's free. You get the ebook immediately, and then we, we, we ship the, the book book out like the next day. So, uh, so grab that. Bangle baby, hey Jen, thanks for the birthday wishes. The last question was a great one. Please answer that one. But basically, uh, okay, so you got two people asking. But Znat and Jerry, you need to talk about you need to talk about your company positively. You need to talk about your aspiration. You need to make sure that the company has a restriction that you can do nothing about. And, and so what you don't, you don't want to get into the micromanager at all. That's negative town. Don't talk about it. Don't even bring it up. It's okay. You do not have to say every single thing that's going through your head in an interview, especially when it's going to get them to question you more. The more you are having to explain, the worse the interview is going. Okay, you want to always be forward, always be forward. The reason that I'm open to leaving is because I have aspirations to do this. My current company structure, as much as I've tried, does not allow me practical hands-on experience to do that. I'm doing stuff outside, but I really want to do it inside. So I'm looking for an organization that aligns and will put me on the trajectory to do that. You know what I mean? Like just stuff like that. There's That's an inarguable fact. They can't say to you, well, hey, you should try harder within your company. Well, there's, there's, you know, my company's domestic. I want to be international. Okay, well, I can't do anything about that, right? It's got to be around that, but the book goes into it. Dan Jenkins, hey, any advice on getting through all the personality test puzzles and IQ drills that you have to take before you get to speak? Dan Jenkins, uh, this is more of a, just a commentary and not even really a suggestion. My only suggestion on that is don't sweat it, okay? Just more people choke up on those things because they're nervous about them. Just go in, be yourself. Any company that is going to dismiss you because of those kinds of tests is not a company that is worthy of you. It's true. It's true. Those tests are bunk. Yeah, I think they're fun. They might tell you some stuff about you, but there is absolutely no way any IQ test or personality test can detect how you will operate with the varying parameters and variables that occur every day at a company. You have political pressure, you have internal stuff, you, you have social issues, you have market issues and influence, economic factors, other things that need to um, you need to consider, customer-related stuff. You can never simulate that. You can never simulate that with an IQ test. It tests your brain in an inert state, which is why they're wholly inaccurate at predicting success of people. So I would not, I would not worry about that. I really would not. I'd go in, take them, move on. Connie Cotter, great to see you, and thank you for the birthday wishes. If you're still here, uh, hope we're going to see you September 13th. All right, let me go. Bangle Bay Rain and Mr. Connie Cotter, look forward. Yes, yes, yes. Alina, got a referral to someone for a job opening, contact responded, and said he will forward my info to someone else. Awesome. Wait till I follow up. Okay, so initially I asked for their contact name, but no response. Alina, uh, I would, uh, when when the person who who is a, who's your contact said he will forward the info, Con so for everybody, when you have this situation where somebody says, I'm going to forward your info. So I just did this for somebody the other day. This guy who's in the boot camp, who's a friend of mine, the, I placed him in, in, a, in a company a while back. He's, he's looking to move on. This is 15 years later. Uh, wanted, I told him I knew somebody at this company. So he sent me a message. I told him to send, what to send me. And then I said, hey, I'm going to forward this and make the intro. But I didn't want to make a mutual intro. Okay, so it sounds just like the same situation. So the first thing that you all want to do is you want to say to your contact, can you please let me know when you forward this? That's it. Just let me know when you forward it. So I actually immediately responded and said, hey, I forwarded it, and hey, I'll get back to you as soon as he gets back to me. 
Guy got back to me the next day, said that would be great. I looked over the profile. I will connect and I will get him into our recruitment department, but I will connect with the guy first and so on. So I got them and then I made a mutual intro. In all your cases, when you have a situation like this, number one, you want to say, okay, to your contact, okay, can you at least let me know when you send it? Then if you if you then it, you need to hear back from your contact that says, I sent it, then wait the seven days. Then contact your contact again. Have you heard anything? Did the person get back to you? And then you want to push a little. Okay. So, hey, uh, you know, if this guy would have called me or emailed me and I said, hey, I'd forward it. And then I told him, hey, I forwarded it. Seven days goes by. He doesn't hear from me. He should email me and say, Andy, did you, did you, have you heard anything? Okay. I will say no. Then I can do one of a couple things. I can tap the person again. I could do that, which is what I would have done. Or I could have given, I could have made the mutual email uh, intro and gotten out of the way. How it depends on the strength of the relationship. Now, the guy I'm forwarding to him runs a 500 person unit and he's a college buddy of mine. Comes over to the house, we drink together and smoke together and whatever. Like we, you know, I, he's a buddy. So I could push him, I'd have called him. But let's say I don't know him that well. I might, I might be a little bit more uh, soft in my, you know, in my, uh, in my, in my follow up. Hey, just wanted to see if you had an opportunity to check out the resume. I just want to get back to my friend, okay? Or I just want to get back to my colleague. If you're not interested, that's totally okay. So you could coach your contact a little as to what to say. That's what you want to do if it's a lukewarm or not so warm relationship. But that's how I would that's how I would handle it. I would not contact the person directly that he sent the resume to. You never know whether they opened it. You never know whether they opened it and are not interested in speaking with you. So, but let's think positively. And yes, Diana, my beloved boot camper. Andy, you'll have to update your intro. To- <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, God, I don't know. I'm not an, I'm not a big awards guy. You guys will never probably never see that button again. Um, all right. Hi Andy. Finally decided to take a leap of faith. Get myself in a code boot camp up here in Canada. My cohort is done midway January. I know January's hiring. That's true. Actually, December's hiring season two. And even back half of November. Should I start applying by the middle of December? Start applying now. I would. I would I would never wait. I would I would go go go. Oh, one other thing about my job search boot camp. I have specialty sections in the job search boot camp that show you all the alterations you need to make in November, December, January, and February. And because those are high high peak times of hiring and and lots of interviewing activity. Alex. All right. Love it. I won't forget that, Alex. So Alex, I asked who the interview is and an intern in HR put only give me their title but not their name, go figure. Okay, so it's kind of goofy that they do that. But here's what I would do. I would then go search LinkedIn for that title and see if I found you know, prospective people that could be the potential interviewers. And then what I would do is I would try to, I would try to do my intel on that. Hey, Mohammed, can a fresher get a job from overseas? Uh, I'm assuming you mean you want to relocate overseas. Yes. Uh, Overseas remote positions, I would say not likely. Okay, Ahmad. Hi, Andrew, I just went. All right, folks, hang on. Am I offline? Hey, Kara, is the stream okay? It's telling me, my dashboard is telling me I'm offline and my my TV software is telling me I'm online. Okay. Hang on, let me, hang on folks. It says I'm, there's no stream. I'm fine. Okay, I'm gonna, okay. Kara, just, to, sorry about that folks. Normally I have a big green button on the YouTube channel and it tells me I'm on. And I just noticed that it didn't, but everything else is looking okay. Okay, 
Just telling me I'm live. All right. I don't see any of that, but I'm, I'm just going to keep going. All right. Let me just get back to my place. All right. Ahmad, hi, Andrew. I just went to an interview last two weeks. I sent a follow-up email yesterday, and I've yet to receive any feedback. Can you give me advice on the best time to send another follow-up? Yeah, um, so when you say the last two weeks, uh, I'm wondering if you meant you had a two-week, like you went two weeks ago, then you just sent it. If I don't hear from them in the next week, I would send another one. And it's, it's to me, and I know you cannot control this, it's kind of crappy when companies do that. I, I just, you know, there's nothing wrong with, hey, we've got, you know, we've got some other people we're interviewing or the hiring officials out of town or whatever. We're going to get back to you by. And then they should have a date. And then by that date, they should get back to you no matter what. That's the way, that's the way I look at it. All right, Myron. Thanks, Andy. Congratulations again on the YouTube board and happy birthday. Gotta go. Buddy, I, we love having you in the community. You're awesome, and I'm thrilled for you on the new job. Cat Harrison Peterson, where's my video, girl? All right. <laughs> happy birthday, Andy. Hello, Karen, everyone. Boot camera leader. Yes, I'm here for careers and coffee because I need to get back on the waking up early schedule for my new job. That's right. Your new kick butt job that pays you 2x. That's got to that's gotta be a damn good ROI on the boot camp. Jonathan Payne. Dude, you're the best, man. Thank you. April J. Is it proper to walk to the front of the room and shake hands of the panel before and or after the interview? Yes. I've had interviews where there was a great distance between me and the panel. April J. I'm so sorry about that because that's ridiculous. There should be no, you're, it's not an inquisition, right? You're, you're, I mean, if anything, you should be sitting around the table with them, right? When I would do interviews, I would make sure that there was, absol- if the setup, what, absolutely nothing between me and the interviewer, or if we're sitting at a table, I preferred to sit angle-wise instead of crossways because I don't like separation. It makes the person feel uncomfortable and you know what is it like you need a power play or something i yes april go do that and uh i I don't know what the deal is with uh with that but yes oh jonathan paint so the video uh jonathan paint thank you for that so so when you know when we do this guys this is a webcam so it's like a 1080p I have a camera that I could shoot 1080 or 4K or whatever. So if you see me just recording, like just recording, uh, you're going to see a super high quality there. It's not going to have the haze over it. I got all kinds of light issues. Uh, but this is an easy setup for streaming. And sometimes I cut I cut video out of here out of the streaming because just for sanity's sake because I put so much content out. But if you did not catch it on LinkedIn, I highly recommend that you, you check this out. I did a... Uh, a video last week on Thursday, and it was a um, uh, Lorraine Lee, who's one of the news editors. Uh, News editors will occasionally reach out to career coaches and people in the space, and they will ask them uh, if they're interested in putting content out there. And so since she asked, I thought, hey, that's a great question. She asked me if I'd comment on, actually, what she did was she sent me and some others an email. She says, Will you will you give us your feedback on the best answer to what's your expected salary? So, uh, so I looked at the post and a lot, some of these career coaches or whoever they were, they typed all their stuff out and their answers. And I'm thinking, how the hell are you going to give somebody enough information by typing all that out? I couldn't possibly type all that stuff out. They need, we need to talk it. So I email her back. I said, listen, I have a video out there. It's the, it's literally the it's literally the most popular video on YouTube. If you type what's your expected salary, expected salary, best answers expected, anything, it'll come up number one. And like the other, like I think I have two or three in the top five or six. Do you want me to send you one of those? She says, would you mind shooting another video and then post it on your, like we went back and forth. She says, I would love, I would actually rather you shoot a video. And then would you post it on your feed? So this is, we go back and forth. 
over like a couple days. And then so I was like, okay, she says, Andy, by the way, can you get it to me Thursday? Because, you know, I want to put the article out and so on. So that's what happened. So Thursday morning I shot it. That's Jonathan. What you were seeing is me actually using my Canon M50, um, which is a much better, higher quality. And it's a different setup and we're not streaming and all that other stuff. So that's what the, you're going to see some videos like that, that, uh, that I'll be putting out. But the best answer to what's your expected salary, go watch that video. It, it, it's great to watch my original, but this second one that I just did, it covers the two most popular questions that I got related to the video. And I give you the bailout answer. If you can't follow my protocols, it works. And as a matter of fact, there's probably there's a lot of comments. There were a lot of forwards that that was the best advice that they've heard, and I would agree. I just I think this is the best way to handle it, and I give you some alternates depending on you know if the recruiter's getting all hissy and stuff. So check that out. I know we I digress there a little bit, but but check that LinkedIn video out. It's 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 just go to or go to my go to my feed or or use the hashtag you asked y o u a s k e d um and and it'll come up or search for search for best answer to expected salary or something all right leander happy birthday sorry i'm late you're right on time you're never late but i'm sure to listen awesome vj thank you for the birthday wishes glad to hear that all right we got a question what do you think about long interview processes I just went through a few interviews with the recruiter and hiring manager for the consulting position. Killing it with your interview tips. Love it. We both agreed to take about two months to go through the remainder of the interviews because he is on travel a lot and I'm currently publishing for a conference. Awesome. He assures me that he likes me a lot and wants to make an offer. So I'm not as concerned, but following your advice, what should I do to keep my stock up during the process? Okay, this is a fantastic question. It is not one that we get a lot because a lot of times uh, what's happening is companies are moving you through quickly or they're ghosting you in the process and it's dragging out and you're not getting that feedback. But I do like, I do like the communication from what I read. Meaning, if the hiring official is saying to you, you know, you said you went through this with um, with HR and the recruiters, uh, and and you said he he assures me that he likes me a lot. I'm assuming uh, you mean actually, oh yeah, and the hiring manager. If the hiring manager is telling you I like you a lot, I'm traveling a lot, you're doing some stuff, we can kind of slow roll this. I don't have a problem with that if it's a very key position, and you are comfortable with the timing. And you you understand why it's not urgent. So, you know, if I said to you, hey, I'm looking for uh, a regional vice president of sales. It's August 27th right now. I don't really have to have that person in place until, you know, November 1 or October 1. We got time. As long as we can kind of, you know, make that happen. You know, it, that's what might be going through my head. Now, I would make sure that it's a critical position as well. It's just that, you know, so a lot of times, you know, it doesn't have to be immediate. If it's, you know, I have a consulting engagement, but I need a, an engineer or an analyst or a whatever, and the pro because the project is stalled, that's different. So I don't know what specifically you do, but... I don't have an issue with it, and I. And to answer your question, I would be in touch. Meaning, I would only let, you know, two weeks go by, and then I would reach in. Okay, like it's not. You should not be silent, dead silent for a month. That's no good, no good. So just make sure. Hey, wanted to check in, see if you wanted to have a quick chat on the phone, see if you wanted me to come over for some coffee or whatever or whatever. You know what I mean? Like figure out what is appropriate. But yes, I would be in touch. And I would, I would, you could sit, maybe if you're friendly with the hiring manager, you could send the message to him and the recruiter. So, you know, that's another option instead of just sending it to the recruiter. The, the mo most important thing about the recruiter is the recruiter is always copied on the communications. Don't, 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 don't shun the recruiter. The recruiter needs to be in the know. So that just, just keep that in mind. All right, let me see if I got. I'm gonna make sure I don't miss. All right, 
Laura D. Oh, that's good. I would not, Laura, I would not recommend pasting your resume in the body of an email. Um, I would not recommend that. It's, it's a little bit obnoxious. And, uh, but I appreciate what you're saying about, you know, but, you know, if it's a PD, I don't really, you know. That's a low problem. I open my I open my attachments. Hey Isis, yes you are a leader. Manisha, dear Andy, is it okay to include resume as text following the boss hunting cover letter? I would not. I would not. Actually, I just, I just said that. I would not. I really wouldn't. I think the phishing. Uh, while I'm sure there are some people that are worried, I think it's a low risk. Oh, Rodrigo. Hey, buddy. You are a boot camper and you are awesome. And yes, you are an annual member of the Leadership Monthly Program. I didn't recognize the handle. What is my dog doing back there? Is he shaking? Oh, girl dog's going to keep boy dog company. Joan Tucker. Hey. Lorena, I have an online interview with two stages, one with an HR and one with the department manager. Both are on the same day, head-to-head -head with a 15-minute break. Should I take this as a good sign? Sure, why not? I like that. That's cool. Actually, companies probably ought to do that more. Jose. How can I check if a job offer is not real? The other day I received a job offer that said if I wanted to go to the interview, I would have to pay in order to be considered. Jose, uh, while I am not completely familiar with all the customs and practices in Mexico, I would, I do. So here's a lot of times what I will do. I will literally go to Google literally and i i will po put in the names of whatever i got from whomever i got it and a lot of times what will happen is people will say there will be forum strings or other things that we'll be discussing hey this is spam hey this is luring you to do something or another or whatever uh so i would go through my regular internet based checks if there is not a phone number on the thing, I'd be a little suspicious. I would try to call it and then see what, what comes up. Certainly do not give them any money or any credit cards or any of that stuff. So that's that's a little weird. Joe, thank you for that. You know, I never say this, but can I at least get a birthday thumbs up today? Um, Kara, can you let me know? We're still good. I'm assuming we're still good. <clears throat> yeah, if you're liking this, please share. Please hit the thumbs up and please subscribe. Okay, enough of that. Tony DeCunto, just love your talks, buddy. Love your name. Awesome. And, okay, the 10 by 10. So I'm, I'm at 745 with Kara. The 10 by 10 job search formula is one of the most awesome gifts ever. It is a, an, it's, it ha, on the front, it has an assessment of the health of your job search. You can rate yourself in certain areas based on criteria that I give you. Then you can look at the areas where you need to improve. Then there is a section of how to improve in those areas, the, the most common mistakes and what to do instead, right? The best steps, the common mistakes, and what to do instead. And if you're really smart, you'll take that and go watch the How to Find a Job You Love uh, free webinar. It's awesome. Awesome stuff. Eli Nolan, what is your opinion on an interview interviewer that denies the opportunity based on your answer for what is your biggest weakness? Eli and everybody else, I think what is your biggest weakness is the, it is not, if not the dumbest question, probably one of the top three stupidest questions you can be asked in an interview. That's how I feel. What does that tell you? What as an interviewer, what does that tie? I have no idea. 
And so my opinion on that, thanks for clarifying you want my opinion, is I think that's a joke and I would not want to work for that company. Who's, who, I would not work for a company that would put an interviewer who disqualifies me for the answer to that question. First off, the interviewer asking the question is a bonehead move. And the second thing is to disqualify me is even dumber. That's what I think, flat out. RT, you're welcome. Regina Johnson, thank you for the birthday wishes. Asim, Andy received the interview intervention today from Clip Flipkart. Looking forward to your wisdom. Awesome. Read it in good health. I love that you have it. Fingers crossed. Mine are for you too. Mr. Eddie Biscetti. <laughs> Thank you for the birthday wishes. And Carrie Freeman, how are you? Tony Bootcamper, yes, you are. I read that after Labor Day is the most attractive time for new positions in job searching. That's not true. Uh, is this truly the case? That's not true. And if so, how can we capitalize on this? Typically, December, January, February are the very best times. Uh, any time of year is a good time to search, depending. I mean, you don't, you know, it depends who the company is you're targeting, what their fiscal year looks like. It depends if there's seasonality components. Uh, it, it just depends. And so if you feel. <clears throat> Uh, Tony, I don't feel that's the case. Since you are a boot camper, what you could also do is you can check out my the module, uh, the specialty module on what to do in the high peak seasons for hiring. There's all the adjustments that I would make, but I would check that out. I, I don't know that I would be doing anything differently than all the base stuff that I give you in the boot camp. Hey, mom. Happy birthday to my sunshine. Love you, Mom. Great to see you. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Evelyn, oh, Joy, thank you. Mohit, Andy, just got rejected from an interview I recently, I really felt good about. The reason being manager gave was they didn't feel, they didn't feel I would be a good fit for the team. Can you kindly share, share some light on this? So, Mohit, I'm not sure uh, what I what I would have done <clears throat> is if I got a feedback like that, I would ask just one time, not like beg or anything, is what about it didn't they feel was a good fit? So usually they are pointed, usually, not always, because I, I have very limited information here, as do you. <clears throat> usually when they say fit, they're talking about cultural fit. So there are personality traits, cultural alignment, inclinations. Uh, so for example, if, if, I'm, if I'm interviewing somebody who's a technologist for a customer service position or a support position, whether it's for internal team members or, or people, or whether it's for external customers who would call into the help desk, if I did not d think that that particular person was empathetic, I would never hire the person. If you're in a customer service position, you need to have empathy. You need to be able to project and what that person might be going through, even if you cannot possibly comprehend the level of frustration and so forth. If, if I didn't think you had empathy for that person, I would say to you, I didn't feel that you were a good fit for this particular type of position in our company. If I didn't like you at all, I would just say, I don't think you fit our company culture or something of that nature. But it's it's difficult to speculate, but usually that is the case. So I hope that at least sheds a bit of light. All right, wait, real quick. All right, I got my, I got my little thing here. All right, goal setting masterclass, September 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Out of reach but insight book, this guy is, 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 is free. Leadership Monthly Live on September uh, 11th. That's on habit building. The meet and greet in Chicago. That's September 13th. The job search boot camp. That's September 18th. But get in any time. Actually, what would be really smart is get in the boot camp. And if you need $100 off the base package, just email support at milewalk.com and we will drop it from $597 to $497. And the resume writing class is $49, but you likely are going to have to get the link here or you're going to have to or, or, or check your email from this morning that has it in like the PPPS or something that's down there. Or you got to email support at milewalk.com and say, hey, Andy, what was Andy talking about with that resume writing thing? 
All right, so those announcements. Let me see if I could get a few more of these in here. Jerry, you're welcome. You have the interview book. Okay. You haven't read it yet. Get going, my friend. All right. You're not an idiot. Come on. This is just in good fun. Mike Elliott, hey. Great to have you. Victor, good morning to you and thanks for the birthday wishes. Carrie, Chris. Manisa, awesome. Stream looks good. God, I'm wondering what the heck is wrong. Uzoma, hey, buddy. All right, everybody's just letting me know. Jay Jones. Several vacancies, same story. I continue to get to the final interview round and I'm not selected for the role. Any idea what I'm not doing right or should change immediately? Happy birthday. Thank you for that. Obviously, it's a, it's really difficult to tell why you're not getting over the goal line, um, especially if you're getting to the final round. That's that's real. You know, I Jay Jones. I wish I could tell you. I don't. I don't know. Uh, the one thing that I I would suggest though, because I want to give you a bit of help here, is I I don't know if you have the interview intervention book, but if you don't. There's a section in there that talks about how to close up the interview, um, asking particular questions. You know, do they have any reservations? Trying to surface those, uh, trying to either eradicate them or clarify them, or fill them in on information they don't have, or dampen them if they are. And that would be one suggestion I would look at: is make sure you are closing properly, so you can get that in interview intervention. Amanda Brown, I had a second interview in July for a job that I really want, but I still haven't heard back. However, my application is still pending in the applicant portal role or portal as of today. What should I do at this point? Amanda, that's a tough one because that's a month. I would email the recruiter. I would ask if there's any up, just say, hey, look, I'm really excited about the opportunity. I've had, you know, with the two interviewers I've met or had had, I'm really excited about this. I noticed, literally, like almost relay back to them what you said to me. I noticed the application is still pending. I just wanted to inquire if this opportunity is still available, and if so, what the next steps and might be and when. And that's that's all I would do. Ken Lee, hey. How can I answer why should we hire you? Ken Lee, get the book. The answer's in there. In the silver bullet chapter, Alina, Andy, follow up by my question earlier, pressing the contact because there's a current job opening. Should I apply for the job anyway? Alina, I would not apply until I pressed my contact. If if the contact says I tried to get to the hiring official or the or the main contact or whoever, and I'm getting dead silence, then go and put it in. Alex. Started following you a month ago. You're amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you for all you do to help your community. You are welcome. I do not ever plan to stop. Addie Mala. Hi, Andy. I need a resume overhaul but can't afford a professional service. Any recommendations or your prior videos? Yes. So, a couple things. For 49 bucks. Now, I know that that's a cost. And I, I don't want to say that that's a lot or a little because it's relevant it's relative to to everybody right forty nine dollars might be nothing to some people but it might be a ton of money to others. If you could swing the forty nine bucks, there is no I guarantee the resume will practically write itself. It is an awesome resume writing masterclass. I go through everything. You get all the templates. You get the booklets to generate the content. You get all the instruction. It it spoon feeds you. That would be my first recommendation because that's like normally a $300 course. The second thing is I have a resume playlist on YouTube. I would watch everything on that playlist. There is one about how to build the ultimate professional resume, but that's not nearly as deep. It's a 20-minute video. It's still not nearly as detailed as me going through everything in that $49 program. So I would suggest if if you want to go the free route, then do two things, watch the playlist, but watch all the videos, and also check out the free webinar, Three Secrets to Get Your Resume Noticed. That's a really that's a really good one, too. 
And as a matter of fact, uh, if you're going to go the free route, watch the webinar first. Watch the webinar first. That's going to give you context about how people go through it and the kind of stuff they're looking for. And then the, the resume writing playlist is going to give you more prescription on how to actually package it. Lorraine, you're welcome. Kick butt. Steve, thanks. Addie, thanks. Jenny Hinkle. Just have to say that your resume template has really approved my percentage of getting an interview. Even if I have to drop it in the ATS, thank you so much for all you do. You're welcome. And Jenny Hinkle, I know you're a boot camper wannabe. September 18th, we're going to crush the ATS with the boot campers. So think about it. Get in. Warren, go, go. Good luck. Conversation with Cass and Cat Divas 5. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Fia Rose. Hi, Andy. Watched your podcast and I am a subscriber. Awesome. Andy, yeah. Uh, so, so, so you got the, actually, okay, maybe you, so by the way, when I do all, the, I have nothing open on my machine but the TV software, the YouTube stuff, and then Kara and I communicating. So maybe you, maybe I got the email alert that you jumped into the class. I hope you do get the resume writing class. It is smoking hot. And for 49 bucks, you will, you will love it. You will, hey, you'd love it that at any price, but that's really a steal. Emily, thank you for that. And I'm glad you are here live. Sparsh, hey, Andy, what do you think of CFA? Uh, are you talking about the financial? Um, I'm not sure what you what you mean there. I know there are CFPs and uh, CPAs and all that good stuff, but I'm not. Uh, in what context? If you give me some context, I will tell you what I think. Miss Clancy, happy birthday, Andy! Thank you for that for all the great content. You're welcome. You'll be in Chicago at the end of September. Oh, you gonna miss? All right. Well, we'll miss you. So, folks, on the meet and greet September 13th. Like, you could fly into O'Hare, get off the plane, in like five minutes, be at the place, and then you could, you know, have fun, drink, eat a little bit, and then, and then hop another flight. Don't even need to pack your luggage. Just your, just whatever you want, you know, business cards. Marcus from Naples, hey, Omatara, how you doing? Conversation with Cass and Cat. you are welcome. Evelyn O, I'm hoping you're doing something to celebrate your birthday. You know what? I think we're at the end of the... Kara, let me know. I think we're at the end of the chat. This is really good because I, I, I got to get running. Evelyn, I, uh, I you know, I'm going to work. And and uh, I'm going to go for a run here in, in a short while. And then I'm going to... Uh, my wife booked me with a massage for her with her therapist. So I'm going to go there. But I got a lot of work to do. Goal setting masterclass next week. Get the out of reach book. Join my leadership monthly live uh, program. It's on habit building. September 13th, Chicago meet and greet. Job search boot camp on the 18th. Resume writing class for 49 bucks. You all, I hope you all have a good day on my birthday. I know I'm going to have one, and I know it started out right. All right, you guys, we'll see you Thursday, live office hours. Take care.